In this video, I'll demonstrate creating a district map for a Howard County Council with three districts and five members per district. I'll use the Auto Redistrict application, available from autoredistrict.org. Once the file is downloaded and unzipped, uh, you have an autoredistrict.jar file. That's the actual Java program that you run uh, to run the application. In the same directory, we've also placed uh, four other files, uh, the redistricting-input files that are shown here. Those file, four files taken together are what are called an ESRI shapefile. They contain the precinct boundaries, the demographic data, and the election results from 2018 that we're going to use for the redistricting process. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and, and run the application. We have the application itself and the data needed to run it. Once the application comes up, this is the main window that we see. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to load the redistricting input data into the application. So we'll go to the File menu. We're going to open an Esri shape file. That's the format that we're using. We're going to select the file that I showed you earlier. Um, open that. And once it's opened, we now have a Howard County map containing precinct boundaries for 118 precincts, uh, as well as the demographic data and elections data. Uh, we can look at the actual uh, tabular data that was imported and verify that the data looks, looks to be what we think it is. So you see there are the different columns. We have the uh, various demographic groups broken down in each column for each of the 118 precincts. We have the election results for county council and county executive in 2018. Uh, and we have the districts. And finally, we have the precinct designators. We'll expand that column a little bit so you can see the full identifier for the precincts. So that's the, that's the tabular data we'll be working with, and then of course the map data we'll be working with is shown in the map in the background. Those are the precinct boundaries. At this point we need to tell the program the various parameters that we're going to be using. Uh, first we tell it what the population, what, what column the population figures are from in the input data. Then we tell it which columns we're going to use for election data. We're going to use the county council data, first Democrats and then Republicans, so that we get the colors right, blue for Democrats, red for Republicans. Uh, we're not going to use the county executive race data um, because we're just going to focus on the county council. Then we tell it which column is being used to contain the district designator. Uh, once we tell it that, it, it can now show us the five current Howard County Council districts, and you can also see the precinct boundaries in, in uh, black in the background. Next, we specify the various ethnic groups and racial groups that we're using. Non-Hispanic white, non-Hispanic black, non-Hispanic Asian, non-Hispanic multiracial and other races, and then finally, Hispanic origin. There are other uh, racial and ethnic categories in the census data, but we're not going to use them because the number of people in Howard County in those groups is so small. Next, we specify how many districts we want. We're going to use three districts with five members per district. Uh, this is ranked choice voting, so there's a uh, thing called a quota, in which there are two types, two, uh, two different uh, definitions of a quota we can use. We're going to use what's called the droop quota. And at this point, we can go ahead and start the process. What's happening now is that the redistricting program is attempting to uh, create three different districts and basically figure out 
how to best balance those districts in terms of party vote share and racial and ethnic categories. Uh, every iteration, it generates a number of maps, up to 200 maps. It picks the top maps, it combines them, and then it um, chooses the very, the very best maps from those, uh, makes some random mutations, and then uses that as the basis for the next round of, of uh, uh, choosing maps. Here you can see the, si the 16 top maps that are, that are being chosen at each step. Um, and then again, if we go back and look at the single map, uh, that'll be the very top map that's been generated or the, that's been chosen for the next iteration. Notice the uh, blue and red stripe at the top that represents the relative proportion of Democrats and Republicans. Uh, vote share based on the 2018 council elections. And then the blue and red boxes represent the number of seats in the 15-member council that Democrats would be expected to win based on the maps that are cur currently being drawn. Uh, right now, those maps are producing anywhere from four to five Republican seats, uh, and then uh, either 10 or 11 Democratic seats. Let's skip ahead to the end of the redistricting process. Uh, at this point, we've done about 8,000 iterations, and the districts have settled down in, their, in what will, will uh, be their final form. We'll go ahead and stop it. Uh, you see that there are five Republican seats at this point and 10 Democratic seats, roughly matching the proportion of the, of the two parties in, in, in terms of their vote share. Let's look at the final statistics. First, you can see that the populations of the three districts are pretty much equal, which is what we want. We see that the first district has uh, three Democratic seats, two Republican seats. Second district has four Democratic seats, one Republican seat. And then the final third district has three Republican seats, sorry, three Democratic seats and two Republican seats. So for a total, again, of 10 Democratic seats and five Republican seats for the county council as a whole. At this point, I'll go ahead and save the results of the redistricting process. We'll save the output as a comma-separated value format file or CSV file. And this will be our redistricting output file, this distinct from the input file. Go ahead and save that in the same directory. Then I'll close the application because we're done with it now. And we'll go ahead and look at the actual file that's produced as output. So the file contains a, a header line that repeats our different de demographic groups um, along with the district and precinct. The district field is now the field that describes uh, which, pre which district each precinct is in with under our new redistricting output. You see these, these precincts have been put into District 1. These precincts have been put in District 3. And these precincts have been put into District 2. And that completed that. It completed the redistricting process. And we're now ready to use the output and further analyses.